Hello, hello, welcome to my channel. This is Unique Fumi. Thank you for coming here again. And also, if you are my subscriber, thank you. I'm grateful. If you have not yet subscribed, please press the red button at the bottom of this video on the right side. Please press it. If you press it, you're supporting this channel. And also, after subscribing, there's a bell there, the notification bell. If you press it, then you'll be getting notifications of every update from this channel. So, and also, please share this video. Share any video from this channel that you feel can bless someone, that you feel that can be useful to somebody. Thank you so much. So, today's church talk again. Church talk. We're talking. I say, church, let's talk. Yeah. And the topic is touch not, touch not my anointed. Yeah, this is um, a sensitive topic. And this verse of touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm is gotten from the book of Psalm 105 verse 15. But if you want to get the full um, knowledge of it, just read Psalm 105 from verse 1 down. Read it then, you can actually... Um, understand that story better so touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm <laughs> praise God so anyway this topic before I go into it I need to let us know that I'm also a minister of God I'm ordained as an assistant pastor my husband is a parish pastor so I'm automatically a pastor's wife I minister to people and my husband is also a man of God so this video is not to bash men of God. This video is not to belittle the office of men of God. Please, we need to get that right. I am not here to belittle that office. The, these um, the men of God, um, pastors, bishops, um, reverends, you know, every office of men of God is an esteemed office. Uh, there are people that we revere. There are people that we respect. Uh, in fact, I grew up like um, in, in my language, in Yoruba language. I see because there are some words that I still love in Yoruba language. Like in Yoruba language, they are called Eniowo. People that should be respected. People that should be revered. You know, I am not here to actually bash men of God. I'm not here to bash ministers, but we need to get things right. We need to just sort things. Church, we need to talk because a lot of times the fault is with all of us, the leaders, the followers, the members, the ministers, all of us have faults in this thing. And you know, the reason I wanted us to understand this touch not, that uh, touch not my anointed is because I, we misuse it. Christians church, we misuse it. Every time, most times, when a minister is um, is misbehaving or is doing wrong things or is doing evil, you know, or ruining lives, the next thing people say is, I don't want to talk. The Bible says, touch not my anointed. Or they're quick to talk about the story of um, Aaron and, um, and uh, Miriam in Numbers um, chapter 12. And, uh, you know, when when aaron and miriam spoke against moses when moses uh, married the ethiopian woman and you know god punished um aaron and uh, miriam when miriam uh, became leprous and all that but see god is not evil it is not every time that every leader it's not every leader that misbehaves that is a moses Okay, if we look at the story of Moses, we'll see that God actually told him, go and read Numbers chapter 12. You will see that God said he spoke with Moses face to face. You know, that he spoke with other prophets through dreams, but he spoke with Moses face to face. And see, if every leader was a Moses, Jesus Christ wouldn't have warned us in Matthew chapter 7 verse 15 that we should be where? of false prophets these ravenous wolves that come to us in sheep's clothing it means there are false prophets in leadership in the church not even outside the church in the church they hold titles they have spiritual positions okay and they are they are ministering they are evil to to members 
you can't love the church more than Jesus. Now, in this video, I am going to be, I'm not going to use my words. I'm going to be using the words of Jesus Christ. I'm going to be quoting scriptures. And also, you know, coincidentally, thank God, this morning um, in RCCG, I'm a member of Redeemed Christian Church of God. And um, our Open Levels topic today is Stand Out Against Evil. Today is 1st of September 2019, Sunday 1st of September 2019, and our topic in Open Heavens today is stand out against evil. And if you read the Open Heavens, or if you get a chance to read it, we will see that Daddy Gio actually encouraged us, using the word of God, that we should not sit on the fence on issues. We should speak out against evil. That when we keep quiet, we are actually justifying evil. We are allowing evil to thrive. And he used one of the Bible verses he used, he used today was Proverbs 17 15. And because in Proverbs 17 15, you know, that's when um, it's there that you're an abomination to the Lord if you justify the wicked. So, for those of us that know that leaders are doing evil and you're justifying it and you're shutting people up and you're silencing them and you're discouraging them and you're saying, because the Bible says, touch not my anointed. God, the word of God says you are an abomination to the Lord. We need to get something right, church. You cannot build the church of God. He said he will build his church. He will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Who are you to build his church? You can't. You're a mere mortal. And sometimes when we think we're using our this earthly wisdom, it is foolishness. You know, here he says that he will build his church. And he says when you are covering evil when you are when you are justifying evil you are abomination to the lord or when you con condemn the just you are an ab abomination to the lord that's in proverbs 17 15 and what i've just said now is all in our open heavens today open heavens is even more than this you need to go and read it or just go and you know read it again if you are ready to understand to to have a better understanding of this so Thank God, I believe today is the right day. I didn't know that this was going to be our topic today. I didn't know that the Gio... Okay, for all of us that don't know who I refer to as Daddy Gio, Daddy Gio is, the, is our general overseer in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And the Open Heavens is our daily devotional that we read every day. And, you know, um, this Open Heavens daily devotional is written by Daddy Gio, is written by Pastor E.A. Adeboe our general overseer so when i referred to when i said that the geo i meant um our general overseer pastor e Adeboe. so because we fondly call him daddy geo so anyway now i've talked a bit on the anointed uh, anointed and the ordained. you see a lot of times people wants people wants church members of church people when once some when they see someone that has an office that has a title they just say, this is the anointed of God. You must not say anything against them. And even if it's the truth, even if it is the truth, even if these people have done something and it's wrong and you say the truth, they will say, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Brethren, why? We can't love the church more than Jesus Christ. He warned us, Matthew seven fifteen. In fact, you need to read Matthew seven fifteen down. Down. You know, like read 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. 21, even 21 to 23 says that not everyone, you know, Jesus Christ, these are the words of Jesus Christ himself. He says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord. That means that it's not everybody that calls him Lord that will enter the kingdom of heaven. Because he said, it's only people that does the will of his father. And some, he says on the last day, some will even say, but Lord, we casted out demons in your name. We prophesied in your name. And he said he would tell them that get thee out of my sight, O ye workers of iniquity. It's not babes that cast out demons. We all know that it's not babes that cast out demons. So if people, if Christ says they would even cast out demons in his name, but they are not his own, he, he never knew them. Never. No, he, was, he won't even say that he knew them before. He says, I never knew you. Get thee out of my sight, all oh, you workers of iniquity, all oh, you, oh, you who practice lawlessness. There are different versions. Okay? So if Christ wants us, it's not me, it is Christ. But we need to know. Please go and read Matthew chapter 7 from 15 down. Read it. 
Because a lot of times we are discouraging, we think we are helping to build the church. We are discouraging people from the church with this touch not my anointed. When leaders do wrong to vulnerable people or to, you know, or the time is behaving to, to people, to, to people around, we shut those people up. A lot of times these people are shut up, they are silenced. And how many lives do we want to silence? I mean, you, you are discouraging people from church. You are not building the church. You are not helping God. You can't help God. Okay, we're discouraging people from coming to church. In this country that I am right now, in Ireland, if you go to Catholic churches, you'll see that most of the churches are empty. Some have been bought about some, some church. I've been into a church. I've gone to have lunch in a church that's turned to restaurants in this country. So you know how churches have, you know, people have been discouraged. They didn't just wake up one day and decide to be discouraged or decide to not go to church. Do you know why? It's because years upon years they were abused by the priests. Years upon years, evil was allowed to be carried on. You know, different forms of abuse and all that. Evil was allowed to be carried on and people were not allowed to speak out. Anytime they wanted to speak out, they, would, they, they were silenced. And then, boom, everything, because there's no how, see, no matter, we are doing the same thing now in Pentecostal. And, you know, if we continue this way, it will get to a time, the same thing will happen. So are we actually, do we think that we are, we are better or we, we, have, we, we love church more than Jesus Christ that said we should be where? Okay? We need to just stop this. We need to stop it. And I know there are a lot of psychophants around these leaders that will not allow the truth, that will not allow them to see the wrong in what they are doing. Psychophants that will not, that will keep pushing them until they get to hellfire, until they get to heaven and Jesus Christ, uh, until the, on judgment day, and Jesus Christ says, get out of my sight, oh you workers of iniquity. Okay? So, it's not, okay, it, 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 sometimes, I, I want us to know that, sometimes, some anointed people are not yet ordained, but God has anointed them. God has ordained them. We remember the case of Jeremiah. Look at Jeremiah um, chapter 1, um, the whole of chapter 1. Read about Jeremiah. You will understand um, that story better. But I will, I will tell you, verse 5, verse 5 says that before I formed you, you know, God was calling, when God called Jeremiah, when God was talking to Jeremiah um, in this chapter 1, Jeremiah was just a youth. You know, he says, before I formed you, he was telling Jeremiah that before I formed you, I knew you. He says, before you were born, like, like before he, 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 he planted him in his mother's womb, he said he knew him. He said, before you were born, I sanctified you. It means before Jeremiah was born, God had cleansed him. And he said, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah was a youth. How many youths are ordained? In, our, in the present church. Youths are not, they, you know, they're still growing up, even physically, so, uh, and emotionally, in, and in every way. It's, we, church is not quick to ordain them as ministers. But there are some Jeremiahs amongst them. There are some Jeremiahs amongst them. But we don't know yet. We don't know them yet. So they're not yet ordained. There are some people that just that gave their lives to Christ not so long. They're still young in the Lord. But they are, they are Jeremiah's. We don't know them yet. Okay? So, let's, them, let's not discourage them. Now, when you don't know those the Jeremiah's, how do you, how will you now know that? How, how, how will you say, um, touch not my anointed? Do we know how many Jeremiah's that have been discouraged right now? Do we know how many Jeremiah's that people have silenced, that have been abused, that have been ruined, you know, that have been discouraged from church by leaders, by the people you see as leaders, that Christ is saying they are ravenous wolves, that they've come to, they, they are false prophets that have come to, to in, in sheep's clothing, that have come, that pretended to be leaders, defiling Jeremiah's, defiling children of God. Jesus Christ died for everybody. He died for these ones. He died for the vulnerable. He died for the people that have been made vulnerable. He died for everybody. Okay? Please, I just want to encourage us, church, that please, don't support evil. When you support evil, Proverbs 17, 15 has said it, that you are an abomination to the Lord. Stop it. 
some of these leaders, some of them, you know, they have even some of people that you're saying touch not my anointed and they don't do my prophet no harm. That are, some of them are backsliding, you know, but because the gifts of can, uh, the gifts and callings of God are without re repentance, they are still there. That's in Romans eleven twenty nine. Okay, so please, 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 there is immorality in the church. It has been from even the Bible times. If you look at First Corinthians chapter five, you see an example there. That you know, so it's nothing new. But the bad thing there is supporting the evil. Expose the evil. Don't cover the evil. Don't keep quiet because when you keep quiet, then it means your sil your silence is encouraging evil. You're allowing evil to thrive. Okay. Please, 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 brethren, let's study the word of God. Study the word of God and, you know, just let's just rely on the word of God and let's lean on Jesus. Jesus is the one, he's the one that, he, he, will, be, he will be the one to build, he's the one that will build this church. It's not us, okay? Please, let's look out for each other, look out for the vulnerable also. Let's stop silencing people by touch not my anointed. That is all I came to talk to us tonight about. Thank you so much for listening. Um, take care. Have a very wonderful week. And remember that Jesus loves all of us. He loves us all. He loves us all. Don't forget to subscribe. Okay, take care. Have a wonderful week. Bye.